Hi, Tracy Mode here. I have in front of me a package of Twin Rocker handmade paper from Brookstone, Indiana. I've had this uh, in my home for probably four or five days, but I haven't had time to really be present and enjoy the process of painting on it. Since I've never painted on handmade paper, I really wanted to give it my full uh, creative energy, I guess you could say. And I'm still a little bit anxious about painting on it because it's so beautiful. And I think sometimes we we are afraid of ruining the paper. Even with um, the normal stuff I use, when I pull it out of the package, brand new white sheet of paper, there's this uh, little fear factor, so to speak, of actually putting your brush to the paper. So I, I am coming on here and doing a little demonstration as I'm experiencing it. And hopefully it turns out. I have no idea. I know what I want to paint and I know the paints that I want to use, but I'm still... <sighs> Still a little frightened of the white paper. Anyway, I'm gonna show you how it came packaged to me in this actually beautiful wrapping paper they may have made, I don't know. But I've ordered, I think these are 10 by 14 or 11 by 15, something like that. Close to the normal uh, size paper that I would normally use, but handmade paper has these beautiful deckled edges that mold made machine made papers do not. You can find a video of Twin Rocker and how they make the paper on YouTube. So it'd be cool uh, cool for you probably to look it up and just see their process. But that's what struck me first of all was how beautiful the edges are and the paper just feels great. So I am going to put this aside and try to be brave and bold and courageous and not worry about ruining the paper. So I did go ahead and sketch out a little bit of a, a mountain with some trees that are going to be coming up into it. I did this earlier in a smaller version and I really like the colors. So I want to do, I don't want to copy this because I think we get hung up and then not focusing on the current painting. We're so involved with trying to make it look like the one that we did before that we had success with. That can sometimes be a block. So, but I, I really do like the colors in here that I used. Uh, there's a little bit of, zo uh, let's see, what did I Mm, it wasn't zoocyte. It was, I've got them all, all of the Daniel Smith Prima Tech here. I don't have all these colors, but I got their little dot sheet and did a swatch of um, all the colors that were on there and some of the ones that I already had. But I used Soda Light in this and a couple of other colors on my palette, but today I want to use a couple more of the Prima Tech, and they're very granulating uh, pigments. So I have Amethyst Genuine, I've got Sodalite, and ooh, I went to the Hematite Burnt Scarlet. I want to use that. I'll probably stick my brush in the Zoocyte and... I think I did the Bloodstone Genuine and yeah, P Pemanite. That was the other one and that one's this one. So I think those will give me some really nice colors. Let's just go for it and see how how this goes. I'm going to set these. Eh, I don't need to be looking at them. I want to focus on this. I don't want to be taking my attention away and, and ruining my painting. So... I'm gonna go ahead and just get some of the darker values mixed up because I, I think what I'll do is start in my mountain area in the shadow areas. So I'm gonna get a little of that amethyst. That's really a beautiful color. It's got some sparkle in it. It moves around on the paper really, really nicely. So that'll be interesting to see how the paint moves around on this paper. I do... I do have a reference photo um, 
of this mountain that I'll be looking at. So I'm gonna try to start with the shadows and I wanna grab some of these colors here. I've got a phthalo green and a phthalo turquoise that I really like. So I'm gonna grab, yeah, I'm gonna grab the phthalo turquoise too and just start by mixing some puddles so I don't have to think about, okay, where is it in my palette well? I wanna have them all ready to go so I don't have to think about that. I wanna do the some of that soda light as well. I'm gonna put that over, over here. And it is, a beautiful color. It looks, it's kind of almost like a neutral tint that comes out of the tube, but what happens is it, it granulates and you get this blue in there. It's really beautiful. So I want some of that. I want the uh, Bloodstone and the Hematite Scarlet. Let's see. I just put those on my palette today, so I'm kind of trying to get familiar with where they are, which happens with time and use. I also have some, not sure how to say it, Perline, Perline um, Violet. And I like that for some of the areas that are rocky. So I'm gonna put that out there. I also really love my Burnt Orange. I'm gonna get that all ready to go. That's always a really great color. Mixes real, look how good, look how beautiful it is next to the, the uh, turquoise. That's a complimentary color. So really super pretty. Now I think I actually, no, I think I'm gonna stick with my um, number 10 Escota Versatile. I can come up on, on the tip of the brush to get into some of those smaller shadow areas. And what I'm gonna do here is just start off with um, some damp paper. And I meant to have clear water, but that's okay. And there's gonna be trees here I'm gonna kind of come up over here and I'm gonna just work a little section at a time and see what happens with this beautiful paper. I'm just gonna drop the color in. That might be a little too warm. Get a little of the phthalo green and some of that. Oh, that's a little, little much. Soda light, I wanna get in there. I love bold color though, so I'd rather go bolder and have it pop than have it not bright enough. There's some amethyst. I'm just gonna drop those colors in and we're gonna see what happens. Put that down. I didn't tape this down either. I, um, I wasn't convinced that I was going to need to. This is my first layer. I'm going to grab a little cobalt teal too and just drop some of that in. I'm going to go jagged in here. I've got a lot of water on my brush though. I think I'll kind of dry that out a little bit and drag some color into those other areas with a brush that's a little bit thirstier than I had there for a minute. I do like what I'm seeing though, as far as this paper goes, it's gorgeous. Except I'm just splattering all over. We'll work that into the scene somewhere along the way, right? Seeing some beautiful granulation. I'm gonna go with that cobalt teal and then I want to come over here and work my way down 
I'm going to put some amethyst in there. And keeping in mind that I can tip my paper to encourage some flow, I do want to get a little bit of a, let's see, I think that was Daniel Smith Quinactrodone Magenta, maybe. I'm going to come up along this edge and do a little of that. And some of this, some of this in here is rock, but I want to keep it soft and not try so hard to make it look like a rock or look like a shadow from a tree or whatever the case may be. I want to let this just do its thing on the paper as much as possible. And I am able to move around some of that paint that was sitting there for a bit. Let's get some more of that zoocyte in there. And these are trees down here. And I do want to pay attention to that because I want the colors to indicate that yes those are trees that's a tree line uh, a little bit more of that burnt orange and i think i'm going to mix a little zoa uh, soda light in that darken it up a bit for this i'm going to go like that I'm just going to kind of play around with this it's not precious i have to remember that it's paper, yes. It's handmade paper, beautiful paper, yes. But if I treat it like it's too special and too precious, I'm gonna be afraid to paint on it. I don't wanna do that. A little manganese blue too in there. How about some Grab that and tip it up a little bit. Now this in here, like I said, was my tree line. And here I wanna have some area of green. I do have some green gold that I can start adding that light area of trees that I see in my reference photo. And that way they're kind of blending together here. And I have also jadeite that I want to drop in here and there. I should have had those colors mixed up beforehand. That's okay too, just have to improvise. And then on the tree line, I'm gonna do my phthalo green, some amethyst, genuine, and I'm going to kind of neutralize that down a little bit with my burnt orange. And I think I might also put in a little blue. I don't want to get carried away mixing too many colors up together. So that can kind of tend to, to um, cause some blossom, or not blossoming, excuse me, um, cause some muddiness to happen. So I'm just going to come right along. edge here let that kind of flow some of this can stay lighter because I want to bring some trees over the top of that foreground trees that is just beautiful paper this down here is 
pretty dark in this corner so I can start maybe adding some darks. A little bit more green. I'll add some jadeite to that too. And I thought I'd add the sky after. Usually I do that beforehand, but for some reason I didn't feel like doing it beforehand on this one. I'm just I'm gonna continue to add that lighter value because I can come up, I'm gonna come up over the top of this when it's dry. I'm just gonna drop in some a little bit more natural green, not quite so bright. And that was done by um, kind of using what was on my palette. Uh, burnt orange. Let's see, now I wanna come over onto my other palette here. And I've got, I believe, raw sienna or yellow ochre. I'm gonna just add that down here. And then I wanna do a little darker areas. Go ahead and grab some more of that soda light and mix it in it with the bloodstone. What the rocks up here are reddish in places so I just am going to put a little indication that there is a bank here. By the way this is Mount Hood National Forest. No it wasn't Mount Hood National Forest it was in the gorge actually. This hike I went on and I, you know, I, I might have uh, rather had this taped down, but you don't know those things when you're first starting a painting. And I wanted to kind of come out to the edges, so that's why I didn't do that. I did not tape it down for that reason. Must remember So I just added some of the bloodstone to that green, and that's a, oh gosh, look at that color though. Look at how beautiful that's separating. I hesitate to add anything to that. <laughs> now these trees over here are gonna be darker, so I can leave this for the most part alone. Let's see. It's a little hard to paint on when it's got a buckle like that. But let's just see what happens. Now what I'm trying to do here, because this is still damp, um, is get the paint that's in my brush a little bit thicker than what is on the paper so I don't get the blossoms. So it can't be too watery if I'm coming in over the top of a wet wash. But it does push away some of that color, so it's nice to have it pushed away. And I'm not doing that with my brush strokes, it's the paint moving the paint, which is a great way to do that, accomplish that. So let's see what happens when I add a little water to this. Cause some flow to happen. I'm gonna put a little paper towel under there though. I do like doing this little technique where the, the paint is allowed to do its own thing. And 
And uh, it's only because I'm adding water and letting the paint do the moving for the most part. It is one reason I didn't want to tape this down was because it is easier to move the paper. Oops, I don't think I want to do that. I'm going to do that right there and add a little bit more of that green gold. And just allow that to run free and wild. A little bit more over here. I do like the way the paper is allowing the paint to just move freely. I'm not probably going to paint on it without taping it down next time. I do want to tape it down just to keep it flat. Add some more darks over here. Where is that? Perlene Violet. I need some more of that. I'll get that over here in the dark area. coming up over a little more movement here. I think I will wait on those. It's probably a good place to stop and let this dry and come back to it and see where where I should go with it next. I think before I do that though I want to add a little Cobalt Violet light, perhaps, in here. Just a little shadow of that. Okay, let's let it dry. See what happens when we come back. 